Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to add live cursors to your website using LiveBlocks and React. This example is part of our LiveBlocks examples. You can find it on the website, I will put all the links that you need in the descriptions. Okay, so first thing first, we'll have to set up our project. So this project is an example of visualization, which means it will display a dashboard with some uh, dummy data. During the package installation, I'm going to get the LiveBlocks public API key. So let's go on the LiveBlocks website and go to the dashboard after signing up. Here on the left, I can select API keys and here I'm going to get the public key. So the difference between the public and the secret key is that the secret key allows you to uh, send requests from your backend. It is authenticated and the public key allows only the public key will allow you to use LiveBlocks from any uh, front end or marketing website if you want. So you just have to click on reveal the key and copy the value. We'll set the value aside and use it later. Okay, so the packages are installed, I'm going to launch the application. Of course, all the code that you need to try this uh, tutorial will be in the description, we'll put the links below. Okay, so here is the project, the initial project. Um, it is just a dashboard uh, with some uh, indicators. We've just added some uh, placeholder data so you can display a beautiful dashboard. Okay, so first things first, We'll have to install two packages, LiveBlocks, the client. For the version, we'll choose the 0.15. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to use a beta version, but when the video will be released, be sure to use the latest LiveBlocks version available blocks and we'll also use the react package using the latest uh, beta package okay so the package i uh, installed i'm just going to show you some files that we'll need to understand uh, this example so we have the header uh, which is this part we have a cursor component uh, it is just an svg for displaying other cursors it will be used later in this video when we will be implementing live cursors. We have a card component, uh, which is just a container. Every card contains one piece of the dashboard, one indicator. And here we have our app.js file. This one can seem big, but uh, don't worry, it will be easy to understand. Each card uh, will display one indicator on the dashboard. Let's start by adding live blocks on the application. First, we'll need to create a live blocks client. First, we need to create a client. Const client equal create client. Okay, so this method, uh, I will import, uh, this method will be imported from uh, the live blocks client package. To create a client, we'll need our public API key. It will be sent uh, in uh, an option object, as you can see here. And the value will be stored in our environment. So I will create an environment file, .env. It will allow me to create environment variables. As we are using React, uh, create React app, our scaffolding system, we'll have to create prefixed environment vari variable called react underscore app. And here we will put our uh, value. So for security reason, I will uh, not display the value, but I will uh, let a placeholder on the project so you can put your own public API key. In, in order to get access to the key, we'll have to use process.env.reactapplifeblocks public key. I will relaunch a start script and then I will be able to access to my public API key. My client is created, so now I need to inject the client in our application. To do so, I will have to use the LiveBlocks provider. LiveBlocks provider is a 
higher their component that allows you to inject the LiveBlocks client. Once the client is uh, provided to the provider, every component in the tree will be able to use uh, LiveBlocks. So let's create LiveBlocks provider client client up and here i will put my app inside live blocks provider i will have to import it live blocks provider from live blocks slash react okay so everything is still working let's go now in the app for our file we are going to add a room here i will import room provider from at live blocks slash react and here i am going to add an higher order component which is a room provider so i have to provide an id value to the room provider to understand what is a room you can go to the documentation where we are talking about the live blood live blocks concept a room is a place when people can collaborate so it is a virtual representation of a room uh, in the real world but uh, it will uh, provide a frontier for collaboration for example every people in the same room can collaborate together which means every time you display some cursors the other users have to be in the same room you can't communicate between different rooms without uh, adding some custom code so for this one we'll give the id live uh, cursors demo for example this will be the room identifier the next thing will be to update your presence you will have to use some specific hooks to send your uh, presence data to the livebox api so we'll have to import we'll need the use update my presence hook we'll also need the use others can use it later i will get the value update my presence equal use update my presence our first version will use the application container element to calculate the live cursor position of the other people so we'll have to use on pointer move event which is a dumb event okay so here we are going to update my presence and we can create and send some data so we'll create a cursor with a x position and we'll do the same thing for the y position okay so this little code allows us to update the presence data when you are moving your mouse or your cursor in order to be sure that we stop displaying other cursor when they are leaving the page we'll also use the on pointer leave event here we will just erase the cursor value cursor equal null so with this code we will be able to update our cursor position and send it to the liveblocks api now we have to display every other cursor that are present in the room Okay, so at the end of the component, I will interpolate my value. Others map. Okay, so I will destructurate uh, some value. I will need the connection ID and the presence object. So first, I will check if there is no cursor available, I will return null. It will prevent rendering unnecessary things. So let's return a cursor. I will have to import it. First, I will use the connection ID to set the key. I will use the color. Let's set it after. And the X, the X position, I will get it from presence.cursor.x and the Y position presence.cursor.y 
For the color, I'm doing a little trick. I've interpolated an RBG from an array of value that we can find here in constant, which means it allows us to uh, generate a random color for each cursor. So this should do the trick. Let's open another tab. So here, as you can see, we have a live cursor that is displayed on our page. So everywhere where I go on the page, I can see in real time the other cursor. What we've done here is pretty simple. We've just added live blocks using the live blocks provider and the room provider. Don't forget to provide a room ID. It is uh, mandatory to uh, gather people on the same room. After that, we use the use update my presence hook to update our presence and send the data to the live blocks API. When the update is done, we just use the use others hook to gather all the others cursors data and display them with a component. So the next part will focus on creating hooks that is using our live blocks API to simplify the code. Okay, so let's simplify the code creating a new hook. So we'll create the use live cursor hook. So we need to import some functions. Import, we'll need use effect. And we'll also need use others and use update my presence from the live blocks react package. Okay, so let's get our hooks running. Update my presence equal use update my presence. Let's get others. We'll have to use the use effect method to create our hooked. Okay. And we'll have one dependencies that we'll have to um, check when we run the ring. It will be the update my presence. For this hook, we'll simply use the document as a reference point. So let's create two functions inside our hook. On pointer move and on pointer leave. So here we'll need the event and I'm going to copy paste the value. Okay, and here is just erasing the cursor position. Okay. So I have two functions. Now I will add them to the document. So I will use the add event listener function, pointer move, and pass the function as a parameter. I will do the same for pointer leave. Okay, so uh, in order to clean up uh, properly uh, our hook and prevent some uh, memory leaks, we'll have to return a cleanup function. So his job will be just to remove the event listener that we've just created. So let's copy paste and use the method remove event listener. Okay. So this hook will be able to update uh, the uh, cursor position everywhere on the document for everyone in the same room. So 
will have to return the others. Last thing, we'll have to return the others value. We'll do some cleanup on the data because we can't return directly our cursors. So return others. So we'll convert others to array and filter something user. Okay, so if there is a cursor with a null position, we will not display and I send back any data. After that, we'll use the map. And here I've extracted all the data that we'll need to return. So the X position will be on presence.cursor.x. The Y position presence.cursor.y and the connection ID as is and the ID. The info and also the presence object. So our hook is ready, now we'll have to use it. So let's go back on the app. Let's go back on the app file. Here we just have to import the new file. Use live cursor from use live cursors const and we'll get the cursors equal use live cursors. Okay. So we can remove the update my presence and other because it is integrated on uh, our new hook. And I will also remove the, the event that I've created on the div container. Okay, so now we'll have a problem because I don't have an other variable anymore. And I will just use the cursor naming and it should do the trick. So we'll clean up a bit. Okay. So where is our app now? Oh, as you can see, it is still working. We can see, we can see the cursors and we simplified a lot the code using a single hook for our live cursors. So what we've done here, we've created a new hook, which is using use update my presence and use others. His job is to bind two methods on on pointer move and on pointer leave event listeners on the document itself. After that, we just return the others uh, data. We've just created a simple filter to prevent displaying uh, some data uh, without cursor. So this version is working great. But there is one problem. It is that it is working uh, by using all the document size to calculate the cursor position. For example, if I am here, you can see my cursor on the dashboard title. If I go here, I'm still on the right position regarding the two uh, window size. But if I go on the right, you can see that I've disappeared from uh, the first tab. So this is because the position is absolute and it is cal calculated on the top left. So when you move your cursor, if you are on a position that is outside of the windows, you will have a problem. So on the next chapter, don't worry, we will propose uh, some solution to answer to the positioning dilemma, as I call it. So which means uh, you can display the cursor in a absolute position regarding the document size. You can use the breakpoint which will give you consistent result if you are using, for example, responsive design. We'll also develop a method that uh, calculates the position on a specific element, which uh, in our case will be uh, very useful when you are developing a dashboard. 
On the next chapter, we will create a new hook that will allow us to calculate the cursor position regarding the breakpoint used on the web design. Which means if you are using a responsive design, you will still have a consistent result. Okay, so let's go back to the code. We will create a new hook, use window live curse source. For this new hook, we will have to change a lot of things. So we will keep the use effect and uh, our function on pointer live and pointer move. We will have to bind a new uh, function on the scroll event. And we will create a function on document scroll. We'll go back to it after, but we have to do some modification on our uh, function on printer move. We'll put it here. So let's get the scroll data. Let scroll equal. It will be an object with, with x and y value. Window dot scroll x window dot scroll. Why? We'll also need a last position value. We'll use it later. So when the pointer move, we'll uh, record the position. Position equal x from event dot page x and y from event dot page y okay and we will assign last position with the position value now we'll create a transform position function It's job, the job of the transform position will be to add some correction to uh, the cursors as we are scrolling on the page. So here I can erase the cursor value and use the transform method and pass the new position. Okay, so that's it for the on pointer move method. Now we'll just have to erase the last position on the pointer leave event and also add a document dot remove event listener on uh, the cleanup function as we did earlier and now we will need to implement the on document scroll function okay so remember the scroll variable that we've created here we'll have to use it on the on document scroll. The goal of this method is to calculate uh, the position of uh, our cursor when scrolling on the document. So if uh, last position is not null, we'll calculate the offset. Let's scroll x The position will be the last position plus the offset calculated earlier. After that, we'll update our position. And the scroll 
value will be updated in every case okay so this one should do the trick so let's go back on our app.js file and uh, we'll change the hooks that we are using here okay so these two hooks are compatible because they are using the document as we know here to calculate the position we'll also have to uh, change a bit the x position of the cursor uh, when uh, getting back the data using the window inner width as you can see it is not working but i have the reason why here we destructurate uh, the cursor using the presence but in our hook we are using uh, some new value to x and y position so here i will use x and y and here i will use the x and y coordinates value so if presence is not defined i will remove this check and it should do the trick so here as you can see regarding the as you can see when using responsive design what we are showing here is still consistent in terms of uh, live cursor and where we are on the page even if we scroll the cursor are still displayed in the right way so if I get, for example if i i'm going in the center of this indicator this pie chart you can see that my, my cursor is uh, still correct but uh, this one include a specific problem so this one is really interesting when you are using uh, for example text or uh, some designs that will stre stretch to the window size in responsive design where we are using several columns for example this one has one column and this one has uh, 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 two columns uh, as you can see using breakpoints positioning is not consistent every time so we'll have to find another way to display our cursors and uh, the next time on the next chapter we'll develop a new uh, hook that will allow us to display the cursor inside of a specific component so to summarize we've done a lot of position calculations using this hook and uh, the goal is to uh, create a user experience that is consistent where you have uh, two windows uh, using the same layout but not having the same size okay so let's jump back on the code and we'll create a new hook this one will be called use element live cursors okay so let's import use effect and use state we'll need them just after okay let's import our um, live blocks hooks use others use update my presence export function use element live cursor so this one will be a little bit more complicated because we'll have to uh, create a hook that will be attached to a specific dom element which means uh, we cannot use document uh, right here uh, so we'll have to use uh, some reference uh, method to target a specific DOM element and we'll also have to use a specific uh, ID to identify uh, our component so I guess uh, the hook will take an ID and a reference in parameter so I will get my update my presence
my others value from use others. So you have to understand that we'll do some calculation on the component size instead of the position as we did earlier. So I will create a state value equal use state then from null and this value will be bounding rect and set bounding rect. We'll use it later. So we'll create a first use effect. So reference will be a value that is used by React to target a specific uh, DOM element and the current will be the DOM element itself. So we'll check if the element is set and we'll uh, set the bounding rect regarding the values that we can extract from the element. To do that, we'll use a specific method which is called getBoundingClientRect and this one is a JavaScript function that you can use on any DOM element. Okay, so we'll set the value and uh, in terms of dependencies, we'll pass the ref value. So uh, th this function uh, allows us to get the size and the bonding rectangle for our element, which means it will be compatible with any element. Now to the second use effect, which will be a bit more complicated. So first we'll copy the value of the current element. Now we'll create three functions. On mouse move. So this one will target the mouse. You can use other element or uh, the touch event if you are using uh, your website on your mobile phone. On mouse move. We'll create also on mouse enter and the last one will be on mouse leave so as you understood uh, we'll have to add the event listener to our element first if our bounding rectangle is not defined we'll return it means that the element that we have doesn't have a size and it will be it will crash i think uh, the hook so let's create the cursor and here we'll have to create a new method a new function to get the cursor position inside of the bounding rectangle of our component so let's create a method get cursor position from bounding rect it will need the bounding rectangle and the event. So I will create my function just up here. To do the trick, we'll have to return a new object, which will be a point object with x position. And we'll use the bounding rectangle to calculate the position inside of our component. So as you can see, we can we can take the event that client x position. We we'll remove uh, the left position of the bounding rectangle and we divide it with the width, which means it will allows us 
to display the cursor inside of our new component. Client Y will do the same thing to the Y position, bonding rectangle. But instead of taking uh, the left uh, bonding rect, we'll take the top one. And of course, the bonding rectangle used to divide the value will be the 8. Okay, so this function will allow us to have the correct cursor position. After that, I will just update my presence and pass the cursor that we've just created. Okay. On the mouse enter function, we'll uh, update my presence and we'll pass the card ID. Y card, uh, you can pass any value that you want uh, if you want to overwrite some value. And this one will be the ID of the component. So on our application, if you see here, uh, we have uh, four cards. And I will use the uh, card uh, IDs to discriminate every card uh, and uh, prevent displaying too much cursors. We'll update the set bonding rectangle with the element get bonding rect function. This one is really simple. It means that uh, every time I, I enter a specific element, uh, that is using the hook, I will be able to get the ID and set the bounding rectangle. And on the on mouse sleeve, I will just erase all the data. Update my presence. I'll pass an object to override some data. Card ID will be null. And cursor will be null. Okay, so now we have uh, our trim function. We just have to add them on the event listener for the element. So element dot add event listener. We'll use the mouse move event on mouse move element dot at event listener. For this one, we'll need the mouse enter on mouse enter. And the last one will be on mouse leave. As we did earlier, we'll have to return a cleanup method, a cleanup function. So it will be the same thing with the remove event listener. Okay. After that, we'll have to declare all the hooks dependencies. It will prevent additional re-rendering. So We'll need the ID, the ref, the update my presence function, and the bounding rect value. So every time one of these dependencies change, we'll have to re-render um, our application or, or, or our component. And for this one, it will just be dependent on the ref. Like we did on the other hook, we'll have to return our other's data. So let's use the two array method and we'll add a filter to ensure that we will not uh, display wrong data. So the filter will be checking for is there any presence. User.presence, if the cursor is not null, will display the cursor. Also, if the card ID is not null, we can display our data. 
The last one will be that we have to ensure that our card ID in the present is the same one that the ID that we provided in parameter of the hook. If we don't do it, you will have cursors on every component that use the hook. Okay, so now let's map the value and we'll extract connection ID, presence, ID, and info. So uh, this value will be x, presence cursor dot x, will multiply the value by the bounding rect dot width. We'll do the same to the y value, presence dot cursor dot y bonding rect dot eight. We'll also pass the connection ID, the ID, the info, and the present subject. So this one is a, a, a bit complicated regarding the others, but it should do the trick. So I have a typo. So three method here, mouse enter, mouse leave, and mouse move. And we also use the element, uh, which will be passed by reference when it will be used in our code. So the next thing will be to use this hook. For that, we can remove all the cursors that we used to use on the app.js file. The problem with this version is that it is based on the document and it will not work on uh, this case. So I will remove oh, up the cursor mapping and delete all the unused imports. Now we'll have to use the card element. So each card has an ID. I will have to use a specific hook which is called use ref from react. I will also import use element live cursors that we just created. Okay, so let's create a reference container equal use ref. Okay, const cursors equal use element there's a typo here. Use element live cursors and we'll pass the ID of the component that we can get here and the container reference. So the container uh, ref will be the value that can link our hook to a specific element. And here I will use a specific React technique which is the ref property and pass the container reference. It means that uh, on the first rendering, the container ref will be empty. And once the first rendering happened, the container ref will be seted to the value of this div. Which means that now the element that will be passed on our hook will be the card container. Now we just have to map the uh, hooks data. So cursor map. We already filter our data, so we don't have to uh, do it again. Connection ID, um, the X, the Y, and it will be good. So let's return. I will import the cursor here because we didn't use it. So here, return the cursor component the key will be um, the connection id okay we'll also, we'll also need the x position x and the y okay and for the color we'll still 
for the color we are still using our trick using the color and we also have to import color presence from our constants so one thing that is missing is to uh, set the default presence values so let's add it on the room provider default presence it will allow us to initialize the presence data so i've done a little mistake here so i have to rename the hook using the correct name use element live cursors and here on the card the import is working now here you can see that i'm displaying multiple um, cursors this is because i uh, omit to check the card id so let's fix this on my use element live cursor and the filter will add some thing okay so i find the error i had a typo here so when we filter on the card id to make sure that the card id is the good one okay so now you can see that it is working great the cursor is displayed regarding the position inside of the element if i move out of the element my cursor will, will disappear which means it is a specific uh, behavior that uh, you can uh, be able to implement and that you can want or not so if i go on the second page the bigger one as you can see the cursor is displayed on the same element and uh, we can achieve a full consistency using this method if i go on the activation as you can see my cursor displayed correctly so this is why this approach is really important and uh, it will be used uh, by a lot of developers because um, it doesn't depend on uh, the breakpoint that you used it only depends on the way uh, that you develop your component and their size so the question of the day is how would you implement the positioning dilemma would you use uh, absolute position from top left would you use a breakpoint uh, positioning or do you use or do you plan to use the component positioning I'm waiting for your feedback in the comments. I hope you liked this video. Feel free to subscribe to the channel if you want more. There is more video coming. Until then, I see you on the next one. Bye.